Welcome to the Super Sentai Brothers. This is episode 13 of Licensed to Car Ranger, the internet's best and only podcast dedicated to Gekiso Sentai Car Ranger. Each week we watch an episode of the show and we share our thoughts with you, the listener. My name is Matt J, and with me as always is my co-host and brother Dave. Dave, how are you doing today? Not bad, man. Things are... I'm I'm good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, no, me too, right? It's. I'm glad to report it. <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a nice day here in Cleveland, Ohio. It is. Uh, I think it's finally... There was some goofy thing I saw going around where it's like, here's all the seasons. Oh, yeah, like all the Midwest it's like, seasons that are like... Right, it's like winter, then like liar spring, winter again, then like fool's winter. Yeah. And then... Or fool spring, and then winter again, then actual spring. And I think we're in actual spring now. Yeah, we are We are getting into it. Like, I, t- I took a... We're going out like a <laughs> lamb. Yeah. It's in like the mid fifties today. There's some sunshine. Yeah, I took a nice long walk today. Actually, <sighs> I love a nice long walk. On my nice long walk, I was walking past this house that had recently had some like survey lines drawn. I guess sure. And there was just like a post stuck in the corner of the yard, and in the post was written the words "property corner." And I looked at that, and I'm like, "That's a weird segment." Oh, that's not a segment of a show. <laughs> That's the corner of the property. I, okay, I listen to too many podcasts. I am in. I am in a very bad walk zone right now, which is the twins are not like they're too old to be really excited about taking a walk in the stroller, mm-hmm. but they are too young to just like take a walk with me. Yeah, so I can take a walk with them, but it's a lot of like. No, come this way, and, like, we need to stop and, like, pick up. Sorry. I have, like, an overload of, like, the wonderment of childhood. Uh Uh-huh. Where they're like, no, we need to stop and, like, pick up a leaf and, like, look at everything. Which is (laughs) wonderful. Sure. Like, it's amazing. But I am just, like, I just want to, like, I just want to go for a walk. (laughs) Um, but they'll, they'll loop around to being dulled to the earth's wonder and then we'll just be able to, to walk. Yeah. So that'll be, I'm, I've got that to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dave, speaking of the earth's wonder, uh, today we're talking about signal man again in episode 13, uh, called dispatch the proud emergency vehicle. But of course, before we get to that, uh, we, as always shining in the heavens, there are five stars. Would you like to hear what our first star of the week is? I, well, yeah, I would. Well, Dave, it's a big week. Uh, it is a big week. Was, it's a weird confluence. This yeah. doesn't usually happen at the same time. Yeah. So I was listening to the radio, you know, NPR in the morning as like I do. do. Yeah. And uh, they're having their annual fundraiser. Biannual, uh, but yeah. Biannual, yes. And I was like, oh, right. Annual fundraiser. It's the one week a year that they come to you, right. the listeners of NPR, and ask for your financial support. Yes. And then I flipped on a podcast that morning, and I was like, oh, this is also the Max Fun Drive. That, yeah, it is. Uh, when Maximum Fun, the podcast network, does all of their fundraising. Right. And the crazy thing is that this is also the week this year where we, Retrograde Orbit Radio, are also having our fundraising events. You know, we we really look forward to this time every year. It's we, a great time to connect we really, with uh, the people that listen to our shows. Yeah, offering a chance for you to be a part of our world in a financial sense. It really helps us pay... Wait. They, oh, oh, gosh, Dave, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong piece of paper. Uh, turns out we've been doing this show for uh, going on five years and have made the curious decision to never monetize a moment of it. <laughs> <laughs> so this... <laughs> this is a hobby that we pay for. Yeah. I think at this point, um, we, we've only spent hundreds of dollars on it. All right. We- <laughs> <laughs> but it also takes, it, it's, it, it costs money. That's true. But it also costs time. <laughs> it's true. It's on both vectors. It does cost. This is not, by the way, a lead in to oh, like, no. oh, we're actually going to. Yeah. If anyone was like firing up the old Patreon machine to start Googling Retrograde Orbit Radio, that's not what this is. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> we have actually. Okay. So here's the deal. We have actually thought about it vaguely. Yeah. We, had just a, we even had a plan at some point. Straight up. Just to cover like the hosting costs. Yeah. Like the data like the data hosting yeah. costs. I mean, it's all data, right? Yeah, but we thought we were trying to think of like what can we do as like a value add. Right. Because like, you know, we never want to make people pay for the show. And we were like, well, what can we do as a value add? And then we looked at each other and we were just like, 
Well, we just do not have time. I, right. at least. Matt, I, you might. I yeah. do not have time to do anything. I barely have time to do this show, as much as I do genuinely love it. Right. Yeah, no, we had a whole plan, but the problem was that, like, that plan required us to, like, do extra episodes of things, and, like, Dave just doesn't have the I time for it. I just can't do it. We've um, thought about having a separate thing where, like, Mark and I do a semi-regular uh, Super Sentai Buddies, so, I don't know, we might revisit that at some point. I just was listening to all these people <laughs> on the radio throughout the week, I'm like, man, that's, uh, that, that's one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> The other way is to just is to just pay for your stuff. We yourself. we have taken the other route, which is just to let Brian pay for the hosting on this show. Thanks. Yeah, actually, shout out to Brian, friend yeah. of the show, Brian. We are a listener supported podcast. The listener is, is- Brian. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Uh, we should maybe say that more often. But yeah, uh, Brian, who is the co-host of uh, Mount Olympus Cast. Yes. Um, anyway, Dave, what is our second star of the week? So our second star of the week, Matt, is another actual great confluence of events. And the confluence of events is that I am on spring break this week. Wonderful. Which rules. And the, the part of the, the dad is, dad has like a training. Our father has like a technical training that he has to do. And it turns out that like one of the places they offer this technical training is in Twinsburg. Which if you're which not is very close yeah. to where I live. And so mom and dad are just visiting for the week while I have spring break, which A, it's a delight to have mom and dad visit. I was actually, I was telling this to somebody. I was like, oh yeah, my mom and dad are visiting. They're like, oh, her parents visiting. I was like, no, no, no. This is a hundred percent positive. Like yeah. there's no downside to this. Like my parents are fantastic. I, I genuinely love having them visit. And then like they started to make another joke about it. I was like, no, don't. I was like, you can make jokes about your parents if you want, but I do want it to be very clear. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm genuinely excited that my parents are coming to stay for the week. I reject your jokes, sir. I reject your jokes, good sir. I love my parents. Um, anyways, but this is great because my kids love my parents and I will be, be actually get to sleep in over oh. the course of... I mean, I am genuinely excited to see them as people, right. but I am also excited for some babysitting. That's very, yeah. very exciting to me. So I'm maybe looking, you'll actually get a chance to see Captain Marvel this I, week. That's I am really I think I'm going to. I'm stoked about it. I hear the reviews are mixed, but I reject that. Yeah. I think it's probably going to be awesome because I have yet to see a Marvel movie that I did not walk out and say like, yeah, that ruled. Yeah, I mean like maybe Iron Man two, but even that had some good even stuff. Even Iron in it. Man two had some good Sam moments. Sam Rockwell's in that movie. Sam Rockwell is in that movie, and Whiplash gets like his own crazy suit of armor. There's upsides to this movie. Yeah, it's got the briefcase armor. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, so Dave. That's uh, the whole second star. I'm just on spring break and looking forward to getting some sleep. Uh, what, Matt, is our third star of the week? Dave, third star of the week is actually movie related as well. Okay. Yesterday. Oh, the other I, one was like tangentially movie Well, okay. Related. We were just talking about movies. So I'm going to continue to talk about movies. Yesterday, I was having a lazy day at home. Love it. And I watched two movies. Okay. And I feel like... First of all, go suck a lemon, and I hate you a little bit. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, those two movies were, and before I tell you what the movies were, I want to say, like, it, at the end of the day, having watched both of them, like, I started the day watching one, yeah. and then at the end of the day, I watched the other okay, one. Okay, so this was not a marathon. No, no, no. Like, in the morning, it. like, I hopped on the exercise bike and watched UHF. Oh, that high five was for both the exercise bike and UHF. Uh, and at the end of the day, when I was sort of like hanging around, um, I put on a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I just made a moment. I just made a face. You couldn't see yeah. it. I love Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's a great movie. That's a it movie that the, you and I saw three times three, in the theater. It's the only movie I've ever seen. There might, There's like one other movie I saw in the theater twice. I saw mm-hmm. Doctor Strange in the theaters twice. Uh-huh. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is the only movie I've ever seen three times in the theater. I've actually seen three movies three times in the theater. Wow. Um, We've talked about this, actually. X-Men. Uh, X-Men 3, X-Men 3, weirdly. Weirdly. And, um, Crouching Tiger. And, and I think I saw Force Awakens three times in the theater. That's a long movie to it have is seen a long three movie. times. You're right. <laughs> um, but I was excited about it. Anyway... What I really, I have two observations about having watched both of those movies yesterday, other than the fact that I love them both. There's, oh my gosh, they're, they're so good. They're both movies that I. It's the I, only movie soundtrack I own, also. 
It's really good. It's all like Yo Yo Ma, Crou- Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, not UHF. I mean, the UHF soundtrack is also great. Yeah, it's, I actually might own the UHF soundtrack. It's just a good Weird Al album. Yeah, um, but it was such like a weird like one two punch of like my high school years to like get really into watching Weird Al at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day get really into watching like an Ang Lee, Chow Yun Fat, Michelle Yeoh movie. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy good. The other <laughs> observation that I had. Is that I watched UHF on Amazon Prime Video, right? Uh-huh. And Sorry, I'm just humming the theme, like, the fight theme song. Yeah, yeah, it's from, very good. Yeah. Um, in Amazon Prime Video, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show. I know I've had this conversation with people before. It has sort of moved into this weird zone where, like, Amazon Prime does have good, like, new movies. It's but, super weird. But the movies that are mostly on Amazon Prime are the 2 p.m., on a Saturday on cable movies. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, if you are old enough to have experienced watching a bunch of movies on cable, like... Like, that's kind of like what's... Like, weekend, yeah. midday, it's a lot of, like, you know, weird, like, late 80s movies that are good, but, like, you're not gonna rent them. Uh-huh. And I... And watching UHF on it, I was like, this is perfect. It's, like, Saturday afternoon, I threw on UHF... I'm sitting around in my bathrobe, like, what could possibly be better? And the answer is nothing. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, Amazon Prime is such a bizarre... Prime Video, sorry. Prime Video is, like, a bizarre thing because, like, they have their own stuff. Uh Uh-huh. But they also have... Like, the selection of stuff that they have, and I will also say the selection of stuff that they do not have... Yeah. ...is bizarre to me. And by stuff they don't have, what I mean is... Is anything. If right. there's any... Because I ran into this, we're doing the Phantom Toll booth um, uh-huh. as our spring show, and there's a movie of it from the 70s, I'm sure you've seen it. Of course, the animated movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want it, and I was like, it's oh, one of my just, favorite books, Norton Justice. It's fantastic. And I was like, oh, I'll just like buy it on Amazon so I could just, you know, yeah. show, it, show it to the kids so they can get an idea for if they've never read it. And you can't get it. Like, it is not for rent or sale on Amazon. Really? You cannot... You can get it on YouTube... Like, you can buy it. Okay. Which is where I got it. But you cannot get it on Amazon. And I was just like, what bizarre, like, what litigious, right, labyrinthine construct exists that has blocked the Minotaur Jeff Bezos right. from getting at well, I mean, if it's this on, movie? If it's on YouTube, then the thing is Google. No, right. but I mean, I guess, but like, it's not exclusive. I wouldn't imagine it's. Why is that exclusive to YouTube? Who knows? Like, man. what is it about the Phantom Tollbooth? It's just like that. Whoever owns it is like, yeah, YouTube. Uh, uh-uh, uh, Amazon, <laughs> get on out of here. Other multinational billion-dollar conglomerate. Um. So, anyways, that's. It's it's weird. What Matt? What's our fourth, what's our fourth star of the week? Uh, speaking of old movies, <laughs> Dave. Completely down this rabbit hole. Speaking of old movies, Dave. We were talking the other day um, about. Oh yeah. M- How did you get on this kick? By the way, there was some tweet I saw that was like, "What was your favorite movie from the year that you were born?" And I was like, "Oh, well, I was born in 1984." Oh, like what movie came out that you really dig? Okay, yeah, got it. Um, not what movie that is, like, called the year that you were born. Although there is a movie of 1984. Um... Well, you are in a sort of... I mean, not unique. A lot of people right. were born in 1984, but, like... Right. Most people don't have a a, a very famous uh, yeah, piece of there's... literature named after the year they were born. Right. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I'll just go see what movies were out in 1984. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. And then I'll see which one is my favorite. And what I came up with is that it is impossible to tell because, like, I was having difficulty putting together a top five. Dave, let me give you a list of movies that came out in 1984. I'm going just... to feign surprise because we've already okay. talked about this. But it's... I'll, I'll be your stand-in surprise, listeners. Okay. Because this list is bonkers. Yes. The Terminator. Love it. Ghostbusters. Love it. Gremlins. Don't actually love it. Yeah, but it's a big. You know. it's, it's a big movie. I just don't. Uh, like it. Amadeus. That dude, Amadeus is an incredible movie. You know what's? Biz- I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt you for a second and like move. Beverly theater, Hills Cop. Geek out for a second. <laughs> what's bizarre? The guy who plays Amadeus went on to do nothing. 
But he's like, it's this one incredible mm-hmm. performance, and then you never heard from him again. <laughs> Anyways, please continue. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Love it. The first Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Wow, I see. The Karate Kid. Amazing. 16 Candles. Love it. Footloose. I love it, theoretically. Police Academy, which is actually probably better than you remember. I saw it in a hotel room a year or two ago. No, Police Academy is fantastic. Yeah. It's super funny. Police Academy is one of those movies where you might think it's not funny because Police Academy 4 isn't funny. Yeah, but Police Academy 1 is right. genuinely really good. Uh, There's a reason they made Police right. Academy 2. Uh, this is Spinal Tap. Amazing. Red Do you know Christopher Guest is not British? Yeah. I, I don't know why. I just thought he was British. He's not. Anyways. Uh, Red Dawn. Incredible. Dune. Wolverines. Not actually incredible, but I do like it. Uh, Conan the Destroyer, not the Barbarian. But, okay. But Destroyer's the one with Wilt Chamberlain and Grace Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as good. Not as good, but it does have Still Grace Jones. Still fantastic, yeah. Uh, Romancing the Stone, Once Upon a Time in America, The Last Starfighter. Love The Last Starfighter. Splash came out in 84, Buckaroo Banzai, The NeverEnding Story. Um, it's just like this incredible list. Chud. Chud came out. Firestarter. 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 Also surprisingly good yeah. movie. Breakin' and Breakin' 2, Electric Boogaloo. Same year, 1984. I need to know more about that. Because I don't, I don't know any of either of those movies. Except that I am blown away that the move first one came out in 1984 and the sequel also came out in 1984. I think that they are like dance troupe movies. Oh, okay. Like they're like breakdancing movies. So this is like movies. Step Up 1984. I don't even know if there's a plot to break in, oh, honestly. Okay. Anyway, it's wild. Uh, that is all I wanted to say. It was just to read that list to you and tell you how insane that year was. I know that there are other years that have good movies. But apparently my year is the best one, so I guess get dunked. Uh, Dave, what is our fifth star of the week? So our fifth star of the week, Matt, is that I was, because the the news algorithm feed is actually pretty decent on Google Chrome, it was like, hey, are you interested in like Marvel's uh, publish, publication releases? Uh-huh. And I was like, well, yeah, obviously. Like, I think I've told you that, Google, Google bot. And uh, so I did just find out, they just released this. Uh, maybe it's C2B2, actually. Yes, this is like um, two days ago. That they are doing absolute carnage. Uh, this is a release that's going to be in the summer. And I am blown away by this because it is yet another reminder that we are getting very old. Right. We are now officially old enough that people are nostalgic for Maximum Carnage. I just, yeah. And I'll um, tell you what, I mean, listen. Maximum Carnage ain't bad. It's, no, it's, okay, uh, the comic run is good. The video game is amazing. Yes, I, oh man, if they're doing Absolute Car- Carnage this summer, I would love them to make, like, a $12, like, downloadable beat-em-up game that is just a new skin on Maximum Carnage. It would be fantastic. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. Now, it wouldn't be quite as good because I couldn't buy the bright red cartridge. That bright red cartridge was so cool. Um, it was a big yeah. part of it. So they're doing so they're doing Absolute Carnage. Carnage is, I don't know, he's just going to be carnage He's back, baby. I don't actually super love Carnage as a okay, villain. Okay, but here's the thing. But the, Maximum Carnage was great. Right, like if, you, if you've been reading the current... Carnage is like maybe the 90s-est villain. <sighs> I don't know, man. What about Lobo? Uh, Lobo is like the villain anti-hero Actually, Lobo category. might have started in the 80s. Yeah. Um, the thing that I'm excited about is that... Hey, I'm excited about all of this. Yeah. Was, I'm specifically like, excited because it's being, I think, written by the uh, Donny Cates, who has been writing it the, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the current run on Venom, which you haven't, if you haven't been reading it, it's is great. killer. Yeah. I am actually... I picked up... I was reading it because I was like, ah, I'll, I'll see it. It's on, you know, it's on Marvel Unlimited. Yeah. And uh, I am surprised by how good it is. Yeah. And also I was reading, I was like, I was like reading, uh, you know, I'm going through the comics that are showing up on Marvel Unlimited. I'm like, why are there like four Venom related books? Like what is going on? I was like, oh, right. Six months ago, Venom came out. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So like, this happens to me all the time. It'll be like, I'm like, why are there like 14 Guardians of the Galaxy books? Oh, like, because oh, everything right. we read is six months <laughs> delayed because we're on Marvel Unlimited. Um, yeah, there's like a whole new symbiote, and there's like a secret history of the symbiote and stuff. It's great. Yeah. Um, 
So they're doing that, and they're also doing um, they're doing some new X Men thing that Jonathan Hickman is writing. Yeah, I'm very apparently like I was like, oh man, Jonathan Hickman is back, and I just read something. He's like, oh yeah, I've been back for like a year just working on this behind the scenes. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so that's very exciting. Jonathan anyway, Hickman is the best. Very excited about comic books in general, about those ones in specific. But another thing, Dave, that I'm excited about. Is, is it watching this clip of Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo that I just found on YouTube? Because it should be. Okay. Um, yes, We're no it longer is. doing a Sentai show. <laughs> we are doing a live recap of Electric of Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo. Here's what's happening. There are a bunch of people in leather and spikes. Naturally, one man is wearing a recreation Confederate soldier's hat. He's This gentleman is African-American, which is a bold... A uh, bold choice. That might not be a... Con- that's definitely a is Civil a, War cap, but it's maybe not it's specifically a, Confederate. Oh, okay. And uh, I think the thing that's blowing my mind is how not impressive this dancing is. Well, they've only just begun, Dave. Okay. Oh, oh, she just took her coat off. Things are getting real. Things are about to get extremely real. Both sides... There are clearly two sides to this dance battle. But they're dressed so similarly, I'm really having trouble telling who is who. Well, now, part of the difficulty of this, Dave, is that we're not listening to the music. Oh, sorry, so watching I people, am. Watching people, okay, I am. I am, sorry, you've I've got, got headphones the music. on, I do not. This so. guy just pulled out some nunchucks. Another man is taking the garbage can lid, is using it as a shield. That guy's just wearing a drum major's uniform. Now, okay, this yeah, seems... with the music, this is a lot better. Yeah, this seems Okay, much... actually, Dave, hold up. I just realized that with the music, this is a lot better, which means that to the listeners, they are neither listening to the music nor watching it. They're just <laughs> listening to us, so we should probably <laughs> okay, stop we this. Can, we can move on. Um, and move into uh, the, the, the... What is nominally the point of this show, which is talking about Sentai. We're going to take a break, and we will be right back. Okay, welcome back. So, we've just finished watching episode 13 of Signal Man Rules. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, listen. Does it have the raw hip-hop energy of Break Into Electric Boogaloo? Well, no, of course no, not. No, it does not. It is a very good episode of Sentai, though, uh, and does contain 100% more Signal Man, which I think is... Well, I mean, mathematically that, well, speaking, it contains infinitely more Signal Man, than either break in or break in two. Yeah, so that's a huge point in its favor. Um, well, Dave, let's just get into it. <laughs> we start. We start on the man himself, the signal, signal man, man himself. The signal man himself. He is at uh, Koban Station. Does Koban mean Koban Base? Koban Base. Sorry. Uh, is, is Koban like policeman or something? Apparently, Koban is like the name of that kind of booth. Oh, okay, great. So um, nobody's there. He's like in the middle of a park. So mm-hmm. this is a mobile base, which I guess makes sense. And uh, Ichitaro, who is, right. I didn't remember his name, but I did recognize him, is the president's son. You've seen, right. He's been in like three or four episodes at this The point. president of Pegasus Motors. Yeah, sorry, not the president of, I guess they have a prime minister in Japan. So um, Ichitaro rides by on a bike, and Signal Man is like, ah, someone to help. <laughs> Excellent. Because so, there's nobody like, else there. He blows his whistle, and he goes over, and he says like, like, Stop. I'm a space police officer. And he presents his ID. <laughs> and then we cut. We have no idea. We don't know if this kid's getting a ticket. We don't know anything. Um, so we go over to Barbarian mm-hmm. at the BB Saloon. And President Gynamo and Zalmoda and Inventor Grotch are drowning their sorrows because they have, they've lost... They lost again, right. and Yu Yu Warren was not able to defeat the right. Rangers. And they spe- can't believe it. And specifically, they lost to Signal Man, and they're so mad that oh, Signal right. Man is here. Like they're just furious. Because if you uh, recall from last episode, Signal Man has been a thorn in the tribe of the reckless driving Bozo tribe uh, for a really. Did I say tribe twice? I did. You did. It's fine. Uh, for a really long time, because he's a traffic cop. That's his thing. Right, and they are of course reckless drivers. We yeah. know this from their name. Um, so they're trying to figure out, like, oh, what do we do? Like, we thought we had this great plan with Yu Yu Warden, um, but it totally fell apart on us. And then Zanet walks into the bar, and she's like, hey, why don't you let me take care of it? Like, I can, I have an idea. I can do this. Which is the first time that we've seen Zanet, like, 
go into the field, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I feel like there was one other time where she she was like the, had an idea, like it was her plan. Yeah, but, but this I, is the first time she's like. I don't like, think we've seen her on Earth before. Yeah, she's like, let me go take care of this, and they're like, oh no. Like, <laughs> beauty's not my darling's not yeah. President Ganimo says I can never put you in harm's way, and she's like, "Oh, like let me do it." Like that's sweet of you, but seriously, like, I can do I, this. I can I've got this. a plan. I've got a plan, and uh, she's like, "Check it out." You, you were in busts in through the door, <laughs> right? And President Ganimo was like, "I aren't weren't you dead?" You, like you definitely died. We all watched you, and we see, we watch a flashback of the previous episode, and we watch him die again. What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, 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 he did die, but he was so upset about losing, and so excited about the idea <laughs> of like redeeming himself to the Bozark that it revived him. His like, devotion has revived him. His devotion to being a very dangerous driver has re- brought him back from the great beyond, and he is ready to rock and right. roll. He is no longer you you were in. He is now revived you you were in. And, which, uh, throughout the course of the episode, that is just his name now. Yeah, um, so he's what he gets is like a, like a World War I, like Kaiser's biker helmet with like know, a spiky thing on it. I think that what's actually happening is more spikes are just like coming out of his back. The helmet that he's wearing, I think, actually reminded me a lot more of the helmet that Wolverine wears, like, in and just immediately following the Weapon X program. Like, if you buy a Weapon X action figure, oh, yeah, and yeah, Wolverine's yeah, got that, that weird helmet with the visor, uh-huh. it looks kind of like that. Dude, the... I am not... The second X-Men First Class movie was not great. Mm-hmm. But oh, the, neither was the third one. Was there a third first class movie? Well, there was first class. There was, yeah, I think so. There was first class. There was. Uh, um... Anyways, the point is, is there's a Wolverine cameo mm-hmm. in one of them, and it rules. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great moment because it's like Weapon X Wolverine. Anyways, so um, she's like, listen, he's leveled up. He's covered in spikes now. He's got this red helmet. Like we're ready to roll. Like we we can do this, and. Well, we'll get to the plan in a second mm-hmm. because it's bizarre and t- makes no use whatsoever of Yu Yu Wurin. Right. In fact, Yu Yu Wurin is the thing that makes this plan fall apart. Well, I, okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. So, um, we go back to Earth, and what we see is Signal Man has stopped Yuchitaro. N- the only reason is he's not riding a bike right. Yeah. And Signal Man's like, listen, whatever it is, if it's a bike, a space car, a motor car, any vehicle, there's a right way to do this. I, Signal Man, will right. teach you. And so he's like, both hands, on the, put your hip straight ahead to keep your eyes on the road. This is what we need to do. And then in the distance, we see Zanette appear. Yes. And she is, from a distance, what I think is happening is that she is pushing a baby carriage. That is not what it that is. That is not what it is. She, she is, is in just fact- like wheeling a hospital bed down the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. She, and she is not dressed as Zanat. No. She is dressed. She's got like a very nice kimono and like her hair is down and she is, her makeup is like softened. She's mm-hmm. not wearing like the sort of uh, stark makeup that right. Zanat wears. And um, yeah, she looks very nice. And what is clearly who you were in mm-hmm. is wrapped all, is all wrapped up in bandages. And then and, he has clothes on over, clothes the over the bandages. the bandages. And he is in this hospital bed. So, like, literally anybody that was, like, slightly... But they still use the you you were in, like, costume, I think. Because the head is gigantic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is clearly not a human head. You literally could have used almost any other monster, and it would have made more sense than you you were in. You could have used a wumper. Yeah. A wumper would actually be perfect. Yeah. But they use the giant-headed you you were in. And so Signal Man goes over, and he's like, oh my goodness, what has happened? And Zanat, who does not introduce herself as Zanat, she introduces herself as Zonko. Yeah. He's like, oh my gosh, my brother, he just got out of the hospital. He was beaten terribly yesterday by the car rangers. And Signal Man's like, what? And she, and she weaves this tail. And we see, like, a sort of... It's not a flashback because it never happened, but it looks like a flashback. Yeah. Where the her brother, supposedly, 
walks up to the car rangers who are sitting around getting drinks out of a machine and their cars are parked illegally, Mm. which actually pretty good foreshadowing from last episode because Signalman has seen that that is a thing that the car rangers do. Yeah. And she says, my brother pointed out to the car rangers that they couldn't park where they were. It was illegal. And they beat him up. They beat him. They put him in the hospital. (laughs) They beat him so badly. And then she sort of, she sort of comes in close and she's like, oh, wouldn't you, would you please help me? Right. Like, Like, look look into my eyes. Of course I'm not lying to you. Would Zonko ever lie? These beautiful eyes. Right. Now, what is not clear is if Zonette actually has any degree of, like, hypnotic power. I don't think that she does. Or if she is, in fact, just, like, super hot, and that's kind of enough. Right. I think she's just super hot and that that is enough. Yeah, and like she leans in and gives him a kiss on the cheek and all of like the lights on his chest all light up and he's like, yes, of course, I am your man. I will take care of this. The car rangers are flouting the law. I'm going to crush... How dare they? How dare they? Like they lie. They tricked me. Right. They tricked me. They only pretend to care about traffic safety when I'm around. Thank you for revealing the truth. Right. I'm going to go crush them in their fake we're, traffic we're laws. We're going to go deal with this. Okay. And then he takes the bed. <laughs> he pushes the bed away. Yeah. Oh, he, I'm sorry. And he deputizes Ichichar. He's like, you, young man, like, you stay here and you watch Koban uh, base. base. Koban base. I will be back after dealing with the after dealing with the Rangers. Right. So, in a few minutes, Kiyosuke and Yoko come walking through. And they're holding some, like, shopping that they've recently done. And they're saying, oh, this is a shortcut. It sort of passes, like, by... The boss's house, and this is a quick way to get to Pegasus right. Motors. Um, and they walk by. They walk by Koban Base. They're like, oh, Koban Base, this is the thing that we've heard so much about. And they kind of keep walking, and then look down and see that Ichitaru was standing there. Like, at attention. Like, yes. he's, <laughs> he's doing it. It's yeah. great. It was like, oh, Ichitaru, what are you doing here, buddy? And he's like, oh, well, Single Man put me in charge while... He went, because, like, and he kind of, he recaps the whole story. Right. <laughs> it's like, he had to go. Why did he have to go? Oh, he left to go crush the car rangers. <laughs> because they beat up this guy. And they immediately are like, Kyosuke and uh, Yuko yeah. are like, Wait, no, hold up. Oh my gosh, it must be Bozok. Like, they have managed to trick Signal Man. Right, obviously the car rangers haven't done this. The Bozok have fooled him. And then Ichitaro looks up, he's like, Wait, what? <laughs> and they're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, the car rangers who are... Not us. Not us at all. At all. Like, clearly are other people. They're like, hey, what? what? what's that? Up in the sky, look. And they do literally, and he turns around, and then they've dropped all their shopping, and they run away. Yeah. Um. So we we go back from there, and uh, we get the episode break, which I only mentioned because we see all of their individual cars, mm-hmm. and I do wish we would have gotten more stuff like with their individual cars. I there always was like, wish that. There was one, like, really cool driving sequence, and now it's basically just RV Robo. You know who's really good about that? It was Kaku Ranger. Kaku Ranger was really good Kaku about Ranger that. Kaku Ranger was really cool about that. We got a lot of, like, individualized robot stuff. Anyways, that's not the point I was just thinking about it. Um, so they don't call the other Rangers. Yeah, it's for ju- no real reason. For no real reason. Uh, but they, Red Racer and Pink Racer, they henchin immediately, and they, they go find Signal Man. So they roll up on Signal Man... And they're like, hey, Signal Man, we, like, we definitely need to talk. Right. And Signal Man's just like, I am so disappointed in you. Attack. Yeah, and it's, they go into a big fight. Now, pretty early in this fight, Yoko gets lasered in one of her legs. Yeah, so she's kind of gimpy. She's kind of out of the fight. She's not moving around super well. It is a, it is a really good fight. It's a solo fight between Signal Man and Red Racer they do some like uh, martial arts stuff first, and then they each pull out their sword slash police baton. There is a great, I think of this as sort of a Kurosawa moment where we're seeing like alternating shots and they're like running parallel to each other. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a samurai, like a samurai fight where they like run next to each other and they're each 
I mean, they're like looking for an opening, so like each one's trying to like get around the other one, and they can't yeah. do it. Oh, it's really, it's really good. I like it. I feel like they do those at least once or twice a season, and I always like it. They do. It's a cool moment, and Anna. There's a really good uh, Samurai Champloo had some really good mm. sword fights. Um, so, anyways, they do fight. It's really well choreographed, but Red Racer is not a match for Signal Man. Right. Like Signal Man is just like. I mean, the same as it is in any of these shows. Right. He's the sixth ranger. He's, you know, he's, right. uh, he's, he's just stronger. Uh, now, Zanette and the wrapped up you you were in are looking on. Like, they are, they are watching this whole thing. And Red is trying to talk to Signal Man. He's like, dude, this is a trap. This is not, like, you've got to listen to me. Signal Man is just not right. having it. <laughs> but as as Kyosuke like sort of make, gets a couple of good moves in and like poses cool, Zanette looks at him and she's like, "Oh man, that red, red racer, that red racer though, that guy's dreamy. I'm I am into this red like, racer. I think do I have a thing? My boyfriend is a huge monstrosity. I didn't realize there were hot guys. It turns out, who knew? I think I'm into red racer. <laughs> and then. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were I was like, the revived you. You the were the revived you. You were, and he's like, no, no, no. Pink racer is where it's at. Uh, and he's so <laughs> he, he is so he's, overcome he's, oh, yeah. with his like sudden infatuation with the pink racer that he just tears off all of his bandages and starts running at her like, pink racer, I love you. <laughs> and Zanet's just like, oh my gosh. Like, this this has suddenly so gone very crazy. badly. And so, it, finally, at this point, Red Racer's like, Signal Man. Look, just, over there. Please look, yeah, it's you, you, it's Revive You, you were in. It is definitely not a human being that we beat up for yelling at us about our cars. Signal Man is destroyed by this. Right, and then Zanet walks over, still dressed as Zanko, and Signal Man is like, oh my gosh, Zanko, what's going on? <laughs> and she's like, oh, dude, like, we're way past that. She's, she's like, no, I'm not. I'm, no, I am Beauty Zanette. Like, she does uh, it like a little, it's like not a, a full transformation. Pose. It's just like a clothes uh, she transformation. Dro- she's had this like an umbrella and she drops her umbrella. And then like when it drops, she is yeah. in her Zanette costume. And uh, she's like the hottest of all the Bozo. And he's like. I was fooled. How, how could this have happened how to this me? Have happened to the me? signal man. Um, and then Zombo shows up. And he's like, Wumpers! He's like, okay, this is going bad. It is time for me to be here with Wumpers. Um, oh, is this the point where they... Yes. At some point in here, um, Kyosuke gets on his radio and calls the other three. And he's like, hey, this is a belated Bozok alert. Please get here as quickly as you can. And all of them just looked down at their radios like, why? Why is he suddenly being very urgent about this? Right, like, why didn't you call me before? Has this been going on this whole time? They're like, all right, I mean, like, whatever. We're we're still going to go. Yeah, so they transform and roll out, which is a different show, I know, but... Yeah. uh, Well, I mean, they definitely transform, and they do, in this case, definitely roll out. Yeah. So it it works. Um, Warren is... Uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I, what I have in my notes here is that you, the revived you were in, is probably going to drop down a few spots on this list based on his activities in this. Yeah, like uh, he's like he's going to move into the creep zone. I think of creature yeah, royale. Yeah, like he's definitely a monster, but now he's definitely like a creep and a monster. Right. So, um, oh, um, Red Racer and Signal Man make up. Um, they're like, okay. He sort of encourages Signal yeah. Man. He's like, dude. It it happens. Right. And they do the handshake with the handshake. There's, a, there's an awesome bro shake. It's the it is the like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers meeting each other at the beginning of Predator handshake. Yes. You know? Oh man. What so a great good. moment. It's such a good moment. So uh they do a bro shake, and then Selmoda just shows up and he's like, I'll kill you both. <laughs> Yeah, that's a huge boost in confidence for him from last week, because last week, the mere sound of Signal Man arriving was enough to, like, give us motor like, a heart attack, basically. Yeah. Um, that does not happen. He's like, I'll kill you both! And then Red Racer, it's sort of like an Indiana Jones moment. He just, like, 
they just both turn and shoot Zelmoda. He just gets <laughs> blasted and flies away. Um, let's see. Where are we now? So, oh yeah, the... Uh, Warren is finally... Warren is closing in on Yoko. Yeah. She's running away. The other four roll in. Remember, she's got a hurt leg. Yeah. So she can't really... She can't the out. other four roll in to rescue her. They've all brought their weapons that they can use to put together Formula Nova. Right. And they bring... Like, they have Bumper Bow. Right. Which... I have... I have so many questions about this minor thing. Well, no, because remember, all of those... Weapons are part. They're of, part of the car. They're part of a car that right. roll in. So when that one car that is all of their weapons rolls in, like the, that's right. They just no, no, pull the bumper. I off. had completely forgotten about that. I was just like you know because all the other ones they just like summon them. Yeah. From the ether, but this one actually no, that does make sense. So they form Formula Nova. They shoot you, you were in, uh, and he dies. He dies uh, terribly. Right. Zadat is like. No, I've got Emo Yokan! And she hurls it from across the field and uh, dunks it. Right. Well, he's got a huge open mouth, it's so true, it's he pretty does. easy. But it's still, you know, it's it's a three-pointer from 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 the half court. Uh, um, so he is that grows. that how a sports thing would work? Right? Yeah, yeah. Three-pointer from the half court? Yeah. Dude, so, you played basketball. Like, literally <laughs> upwards of 20 years ago. Um... Um, yeah, so now he's giant. They try to shoot him again with Formula Nova, which I really like. Because they're like, like it might work. It's, right. We're already here. We've already got it. We might as well, like, angle it slightly up and shoot him again. Yeah, now, uh, it doesn't work. No. And so he's, like, shooting lasers at them, and they are, at this point, sort of unable to get themselves together well enough to summon RV Robo. Well, I think they're about to, yeah. but... Doesn't matter. Suddenly, they hear some sirens. And uh, and it's Signal Man. And Signal Man does apparently have a giant robot. Uh, uh-huh. I, I really felt like last week he definitely didn't have a giant. Maybe it was like he had to get it in from space sure, or something. Sure, it was still being shipped in. Uh, but anyways, he does have a giant robot. And this robot just is Prowl. Yeah, it's just the Transformer Prowl. Like, I think it even kind of transforms. It looks like Prowl. It oh, kind of straight up transforms. It's transformation like because, like, it's a giant, you know, police car, right? And it comes driving up, and it comes driving up with, like, every other police car in Tokyo. Which it's I think a is great, great moment. And then he goes into a tunnel, and, like, the brakes hit, and the car does sort of a wheelie. Yeah. And the whole front end flips around and becomes no, legs. No, fli- like, the front end, like, flips out. Yeah. And then rotates 180 degrees. And then the whole thing, like, shoots out of the end of the tunnel, which is a ramp. And in midair, it does, like, the final one or two flips to, like, lock it into like the, the person configuration. Yeah, the, the, the last two clicks. Uh, and it's great. Yeah, it's really, really good. Uh, its name is Sirender. Yeah, which I love. And it's got a... It's got a bunch of great armaments. It has right. a giant handcuff, like, yeah. launcher, like the character from Cops. Yes. Not Cops, the reality TV show, the cartoon show. Um, uh, Long Arm, I think was that guy's name. Mm-hmm. So he's got like a giant cuff that he uses. Because you, you were in his like got a little machete thing. Yeah. Uh, so he uses that. And then he also just has like a knife mm-hmm. that comes out. It's sort of like the knife that comes out of uh, he- uh, Gundam Heavy Arms' arm. Yes, thank you. That's that's very good. Um, uh, he's got a shield. He's got a shield. He's got a gun. That co- he's got like on the top of his arms. He's got just like slots mm-hmm. and just like a bunch of stuff comes out of out of those. Yeah, I'm sure it was a very cool toy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's probably a really cool toy. So they fight back and forth for a few minutes. Not a few minutes. They fight no, back and forth for it, a few seconds. Yeah, it takes like 30 seconds and, or something. And then uh, Surrender pulls out its final weapon, Siren Vulcan, which is just like a big fire gun. And it shoots big fire. And, and then that is the, again, you you were Finally. In the re- now the revived you you were in joins his previous state. I mean, back. we would assume this is the last of him. Who knows? I, <laughs> Double I revived you you right. were in. That uh, would actually get him to move back up on the list. Yeah, I was going to say, if he can do a third. Um. So, and that's basically it. They yeah, all end up they, at, sort of like hanging out and handshaking at the end. And they're all looking up at Cyrender, and he's like, this is Mike's cool robot. They're like, it's a really cool robot. But they're also like, 
wait, we we also have a cool robot. We just didn't have a chance to get it out, but we've got one. It's very good. And uh, it's he's the like, RV Robo. He's like, yeah, oh yeah, sure. Yours is fine too. He's like, I I saw it. It was good. But like I I like this scene because it definitely feels like all of the car rangers like really being proud of rv robo like no 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 ours is good too like like we did like we're not saying we don't like yours but we do like ours as well. right i just want you to respect it yeah uh and then it is the end of the episode yeah. but of course david it's not the end of our episode because first we need to determine where on the list the revived you you were goes now i okay. assume that we are not leaving you you were in its place and adding revived you you were into the list. Right? Oh, are we not? I just I assumed that we were. I mean, he does have a different name. He does have a different name. Um, because you you were in is oh actually we probably don't need to. You you were in is very low on the list. He's one hundred forty seven right. out of one hundred and fifty five. One hundred and fifty five. Uh, well, okay. You you were in. Revived you, you were in has a slightly better look than you, you were in does. Right, but he's also but creepier. he's also creepier, and he's also kind of a uh, creep. Yes, he is not as creepy as General Cactus and Bara Nightmare. No, no, no. And frankly, I don't even know if he's as creepy as Voice Dimension. And Voice Dimension happens to be the person who's right below him. Yeah. So I would say that he. No, let's not put revived you you were in on because you know where he's going to go is directly below you you were in. I mean, we could do it. Uh, we, c- I mean, we could. It's let's our not. list, Dave. Well, Matt, would you like? Would you like that? Would you? Should he have a separate entry? Yeah, I can make it happen right now. All I need to do is hit add cell. It's super simple. Because I made a note in my notes that we needed to punish him on the list for his actions. Okay. And he needs to go at least one slot lower, even if that just means that he is below himself. There you go, you you were in. It's a rare dishonor you have received. <laughs> you suck real bad. D- please don't come back again. I actually do kind of please come back again because a, a, a third would... Yeah, the third time would make it a good joke. But Dave, that is perhaps the end of you you were in, but it is definitely the end of this, another episode of License to Car Ranger. Before we finish up here, I'd just like to remind you that you can email the show at supersentibrothers at gmail.com. If you want to get any updates on future episodes or check out the things that we're talking about on Twitter, we are at Super Sentai Bros. If you like the show, please remember, shining in the iTunes review section, there are five stars. Rate, review, subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you find the show. That is a good thing to do, and it helps us and other people, and yourself, like inside. The Super Sentai Brothers are a production of Retrograde Orbit Radio. If you'd like to listen to any of the other great Retrograde Orbit Radio shows, you can do that all at RetrogradeOrbitRadio.com. Once again, we are the Super Sentai Brothers. I'm Matt. I'm Dave. And we'll see you next week for the greatest show on Earth. Come.